So you're back, Grasshopper, and you're ready to enter the next chamber, the Sampler Chamber. Hmm. You'll learn how to record the sounds into your MPC and even how to process them while you do it. Welcome to Creative Therapy. Let's briefly start with what the sampler's function is on the MPC. Well, in short, it records sample into the device's memory for further processing and use. This can be an instrument, played back vinyl record, mobile phone, or whatever else that you can connect to the MPC's inputs. Since I said whatever else, the answer is no, you can't plug your Hoover to it. There are four different ways to go about using the sampler, which we'll cover. But first, let's discover what shows up on the screen after you press the sampler button. Left hand side of the screen is where you can firstly set what input to use as source. If you're connected to both of the quarter and jacks, you can set it to input 1 slash 2, and the sample will be recorded using both input channels. If you only use one of the channels like I do with my turntable, that's what you would choose from the available options. Input 1 one for top input or input 2 for the bottom one. There's an option to choose inputs 3 and 4, but since it only applies to MPC-X and I don't know why it shows up on my MPC-1, we're just gonna skip them. Finally, you have an option to sample whatever sequence is currently played back by choosing resample L slash R or each channel individually. You can also choose if the final recording appears as mono or stereo. And I don't think any further explanation is needed here, but it certainly saves a few button presses if you originally intended to work with mono samples. Farther down, there's a section which allows you to add effects to the recorded source. But remember, those are applied in real time, so sample is recorded with them. And finally, button below is used to turn the monitoring of the source on and off. As easy as that. Slightly to the right, you can see the level of your source, which you can adjust using the dial at the back of the MPC or directly on the instrument, etc. Why not just use the fader, you ask? Well, it does not control the level of your source, but instead is used to set the level threshold. When the threshold is reached or exceeded after the MPC was armed and it's ready to receive the signal, recording starts automatically. Otherwise, you have to manually start it by pressing the red button on the screen or adjust the threshold to suit. One last thing to set is the length of your recording. If reached, the recording stops automatically, but you can stop it at any time you want by simply pressing the big stop button on the screen. Time available to record can be set from 0 minutes and 0 seconds all the way up to 90 minutes and 59 seconds. Seconds. All the parameters available are identical to all four recording modes, so let's start with the first of them, sample mode. As the name suggests, it allows you to record a sample. You have an option to place markers in real time by pressing the slice plus button or do it after on the sample edit screen. You can stop the recording at any point within the time limit set by you or just continue to do until it's up. Afterwards, a window pops up, which allows you to name the sample, assign it to a program, assign it to a specific pad in that program, and set it root note. At the bottom of the screen, you're able to save the sample on your MPC, play it back, discard or keep it in the memory, or get to editing various parameters of the sample on the sample edit screen. More on how to maximize the use of the sample edit screen, you can find by watching this video. And the second mode while recording the sample, if any of the pads, any whatsoever, are pressed, new slices are inserted one after another. After you're done, options are slightly different, since now you can immediately create a program, which you can use right away. To use the next two modes, you have to create or select a drum program. Failing to do so will result in, well, nothing happening. But don't worry, MPC will let you know that you forgot to do so by all the pads blinking red, instead of being dimmed yellow. With pad tap, to record a sample to a pad, you press on it and then press again to finish with it. You can also press any other random one for the recording to continue on that one instead. On the other hand, in pad hold mode, the length of the slice recorded and assigned to a pad is determined by how long you continue press on it and stops immediately after releasing it, hence the name pad hold. Any time you'd like to record new samples to previously used pads, you can just go back to the sampler and repeat the process on whichever pads you want. But remember to choose the right drum program though. You don't want to mess anything up. That is why I think the last two modes are the most flexible and creative to work with. 
So as you can see, there's a lot to do here, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it a lot. In conclusion, the sampler is indeed a very powerful tool within the MPC environment. It not only provides means to record samples into the memory, but also, in my opinion, structure creativity, while adding a bit of speed to the whole workflow. Any comments, questions, or suggestions are appreciated and welcome, and you can leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please tap that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. For now, keep occupied.